you're traveling in the North Country Fair. My name is Barbara McCaskill. I'm a professor of English here at the University of Georgia. Just about every time I taught the Multicultural American Literature Survey course, English 2400, Judith Ortiz Kofer visited my classroom. I made it a point to assign one of her works on every syllabus, the Latin Deli, poet, Prose and Poetry, or her novel, The Meaning of Consuelo, or her memoir, Silent Dancing, A Partial Remembrance of a Puerto Rican Childhood. Judith was sharp, witty, informed, ambitious, disciplined, funny, and tough. If you've read her writings, attended her readings, or had the privilege of taking her classes, I don't have to tell you that. For what seemed like the longest time, we were the only tenure track women of color faculty teaching in Park Hall, and we counted ourselves among a handful on North Campus. For those of us from groups historically excluded by the politics of race and gender, or the privileges of birth and title, and excluded for what seemed the longest time, I am proud of how Judith, my compañera and colleague, made that building and this university more welcoming and cosmopolitan places. I am proud of how her writing and teaching emphasize the U-N-I-T-Y embedded in the word university. In the Latin Deli, Poetry and Prose, Judith includes a series of four short poems whose titles begin with Spanish verbs. Orar, to pray, dividir, to divide, respirar, to breathe, and volar, to fly. In the same way that Judith was not into cooking, I am not into writing poetry. So <laughs> I am going to employ such infinitives in Spanish first and English second, not to recite verses, but to celebrate briefly in prose the Judith I remember from our days in Park Hall together. Pertenecer, to belong. My first memory of Judith is a confrontational one that places her in the creative writing office, owning that space and her power like a gangland boss in the film Goodfellas. Head to toe in black, one hand on her hip, one brightly lacquered finger leveled at me. She told me to stop it. I was the new kid on the block, the newbie struggling with imposter syndrome, and Judith was not having it. The secret to belonging is to act like you belong, Barbara, she said, <laughs> no matter how you feel it. As a Navy brat and an Army brat, growing up on the move in military families, we both knew what it meant to be the new kids on the block every two or three years. For gypsies like us, life was not always a Norman Rockwell painting full of smiles, sunshine, and soda pop. In her autobiographical essay, The Patterson Public Library, Judith describes how she lived in knee-liquefying fear of an African-American student named Lorraine who bullied her during sixth grade. As the new kid on the block, from Puerto Rico coming to New Jersey, Judith was what she called the perfect choice for Lorraine's ritual humiliation. Judith was too smart, too skinny, too small, and like Lorraine, too different to fit in. Judith writes, that she came to depend on knowledge as my security, to find in library books what she needed to survive in two languages and two worlds. Judith and I shared this common ground, that the gifts we received from literature gave us an escape from society's pigeonholes. They helped us to find inner freedom as a barometer of self-worth to live and grow by. Colaborar, to collaborate. As a bold and beautiful woman, a full chaired professor and a department head, Judith smashed preconceptions of what university scholars look like and how they should behave. 
She was what U.S. Congressional Representative and fellow Georgian John Lewis calls a necessary troublemaker <laughs> who disarmed her detractors and neutralized their reactions of shock, disbelief, disrespect, and anger by making uppityness and success her twin badges of honor and distinction. Judith was here to stay in this humanities field, and she expected the respect she deserved and had earned. She took mentoring seriously, and she understood correctly that mentoring is a reciprocal effort where both parties give and receive. Because of her mentorship, more women know they have a right to enter and stay in spaces like this one. Judith prioritized time to write alone and think in solitude every day. So it may seem surprising that I celebrate her today as a frequent collaborator. We never co-wrote an essay and we never co-presented at a conference, but we came together often to plan campus events. In fact, we collaboratively organized two that were held right here in this chapel. The New Voices in American Literature Symposium, which included UGA graduates Sean Hill and Lorraine Lopez, both mentees of Judith, who are now professors and authors, and the Black Poets Lean South Symposium, which featured poets from the prestigious Cave Conum Collective. Judith and I also served together on every kind of committee under the sun for the hiring of new faculty, evaluation of dissertations and theses, faculty promotion, solic solicitation of guest speakers, selection of student awards. It took me many years to realize that conscripting me into this service was Judith's way of teaching me that collaboration brings strength to the workplace. Raising money in a recession is a blessing and political intelligence is a skill that must be learned. I will sum up my understanding of collaboration from her description of the power of speech and song in an island like you, Stories of the Barrio. Each time you do it, Judith writes, you risk public failure. But when it works, you hold people's attention. And for a few moments, you may change their lives. Which brings me finally to Descubrir, to discover. The doors of East West Bistro are closed and its windows are sealed. It is gone but not forgotten. East West Bistro in its day was Judith's second command center, an extension of her office and classroom. It was Judith who introduced me to East West where I promptly became addicted to the black bean burgers and fries, and the fish tacos and fries, and the ketchup, and where a ritual of consuming multicultural cuisine felt like a metaphor for our multi-ethnic teaching. Proficient at savoring the little joys of life, like binging on fish tacos, Judith would delight that this University of Georgia community remembers her as a great artist and teacher who made opportunities for us to belong, to collaborate, and to discover life's gifts large and small. In Spanish first and English second, Judith is and will be una gran artista, my friend and partner in books and adventures, as she signed one of her books for me. She mastered so many genres of writing, poetry, essay, novels, short fiction, while most count ourselves lucky to be good at one. While it sometimes pained her that critics pigeonholed her with one label or another, or they devalued her works which targeted young readers, it meant so much that her peers like us applauded her talents for what many turn their backs to out of indifference or ignorance or fear of unknowns and uncertainties, the artist like Judith confronts and engages. Muy animada, throwing open windows, a la fuerza, unbolting the doors. De la lucha, de la vida viene, out of the struggle, bearing life.